Okay, so I have five pieces of media right here. The yellow ones are videos and these blue ones are photos. And I've made sure that they're all the same length. Um, just a heads up, this is kind of render intense. So if you wanna avoid a sluggish performance, what you can do is down res each image and video before you bring it in here. Um, because we're not gonna be seeing them in full screen anyway, so there's no sense in having like a 4K video or a 24 megapixel picture. I would recommend something like 8 megapixels for the images or possibly even lower, like 2 megapixels, because like I said, we're not going to see them in full screen and it's just going to cost us more render time. So I would go ahead and uh, down res these if you have kind of a slower computer. All right. So what we want to do here is select everything and then right click new fusion clip. And that's going to condense everything down to this fusion clip. And at this point, we can go ahead and right click in the timeline and select delete empty tracks. And then now we're gonna go over to the Fusion page. So right now all of our images are just merged on top in 2D, which is not what we want. So we're just gonna go ahead and delete all these merge nodes and also disconnect this pipe right here by double clicking. And the way this is gonna work is uh, using an image plane, which is located right here in your toolbar. Let's go ahead and bring one of these into our graph here. And then we'll connect our first image to our image plane. And we're also going to need a merge 3D, which is right here. So let's bring it here and let's output that image into our merge. And we can go ahead and drag this merge 3D up into this viewer right here. And let's also bring in a render node and then connect our merge 3D into the renderer. And then we can go ahead and connect this into our media out. And now we can kind of see what is going on. So on this screen, this is what it's going to look like in the end. And then over here, this is where we're going to build our stack of photos. So you can hold the Alt key if you're on Windows. I think it's the Option key on Mac. And while you're holding that, you click on the uh, middle mouse button and you can kind of orbit around your scene here. If you just do the middle mouse, then you can pan around like this, okay? So basically, we wanna make one little change to this image plane here, and that's gonna be under the Material tab. We wanna unselect lighting, and I'll show you why in just a minute. So it went black, that's because we need to click on this lighting button. And now we have our image back. And now at this point, we can go ahead and copy this image plane because it's got this setting in, uh, disabled. Let's click on each of these images and paste an image plane just like this. And then we're gonna go ahead and merge all of these into our Merge 3D. Okay, so now all of our images are in the same exact position in space. But uh, what we can do is click on our first image plane. This is our first image at the top. And then we can use these on-screen controls to kind of position this how we want. Um, you can hit W to bring up these little circles and these let you rotate on each axis if you want. But right now I think we're only gonna be using the Z axis. So maybe we'll tilt it a little bit like this and let's scoot it up. And maybe let's put it a little bit forward Okay, and then the second one right here, we're just gonna put it kind of right there and maybe a little behind it. And we're also gonna rotate it a little bit like this. Okay, and then our third image, um, let's put it below. Let's see, and right now this is, we got some crazy stuff happening because they're overlapping. And we're just gonna figure out a good place for this one. And this is a video, so I think for the video we'll put it like pretty far forward, something right here. And then let's grab our other photo and scoot it past. This is actually a video, so maybe we'll put this after this other photo, which is actually this image plane. So this one will go here, and this video will go here. Okay, so we've got kind of a, a array of our media, and they're all kind of in different um, you know, depths. So now whenever we add a, a virtual camera and move it along the Y axis, we should get that nice uh, parallax. So let's go ahead and grab a camera and pipe it into our Merge 3D. And right now it's in the same position. So our renderer isn't actually going to view anything. So we need to scoot this 
back quite a bit because those are kind of big uh, image planes. So maybe around there and we can go up. You can kind of see already there's some parallax and if we want this to be more exaggerated, we just have to increase, you know, our on the Z axis. So now you can kind of see as I go up and down, we're getting some pretty cool parallax. I think this image needs to be a bit bigger. So if I hit E, then I get these things and this lets you kind of just scale. And then again, W for rotation uh, and then Q for translation. And uh, let's give this a little rotation as well. And by the way, if you want to keyframe the rotation, that's going to happen in your transform tab over here in your inspector. So like I want to rotate this one. So let's add a keyframe on the Z rotation and then go to the very end and maybe we'll pivot it something like this. So now over time, this image is going to rotate. Cool. All right. So now I think we can go ahead and keyframe our camera. So let's maybe go up past this first image and let's click on our camera, go into the transform tab and we're going to add a keyframe on the Y translation. And this is in the beginning of our timeline. And then we're going to go to the very end of the timeline and just move this all the way down here. So now when we hit play, the camera will move down in time and we get this nice uh, parallax effect. And then so to add some shadows, uh, what we can do is bring in a spotlight and then connect this into our Merge 3D again. And we're going to have kind of a similar path that we have on our camera. So let's go to the very beginning of the timeline and bring this spotlight up to where the camera is and then go to the transform tab and enable the Y translation keyframes. And then we're going to go to the very end and then slide this right down. And so right now we still don't see any shadows and that's because we have to click on the controls and open up our shadows panel. And then under softness, we're going to change this to constant and we still don't see <laughs> shadows. So what we need to do is actually click on our render node and then enable lights and shadows. And now you kind of can see a little subtle shadow. If you want them to be more exaggerated, you can increase the density of the spotlight. You can kind of see what that's doing. And if you want them a little sharper or softer, you can do that. You can also mess with the cone angle and this will affect a larger area or you can also scoot the spotlight back. So now we've got our camera and our spotlight moving down in time and that's how we're getting these uh, nice soft shadows and the parallax caused by the camera. So that's pretty much that and then if we wanted to, we could just scoot this camera a little bit to the side. You can see there's even parallax when you go uh, left and right on the x-axis. So you can scoot this back over here and then you could add your uh, credits right here. You can use a 3D text node for this. So let's just type in like, <laughs> that's definitely way too big, but we can mess with the scale and position it somewhere. And now whenever the camera moves, the uh, text is also going to move with our images. Cool. And then I'm going to go to the edit page and wait for this to cache. And like I said earlier, the bigger the resolution is on those photos and videos, the longer this is going to take. And you don't really need really high resolution because they're already kind of small. So I would think that a two megapixel image and maybe like even 720p uh, videos should work fine and still look pretty sharp. So yeah, that's uh, kind of how it works. And obviously I didn't, <laughs> I didn't put a whole lot of effort into my credits, but hopefully that um, kind of gives you an idea for how something like this is achieved. Um, and if you wanted to add like little borders around each image, uh, one way to do that is, let's see, let's grab like this image, for example, this is our first one, and let's move it out here into this empty area. And if you grab a background node right here and then take the output of our image and drag it on top of the output of the background, that'll automatically create a merge. And let's drag this up to this viewer to see what's going on. And now with our merge selected, we can scale this image down a little bit and we're starting to see some of the background. And we can click on that background and change the color to something different. And then you would grab the output of that merge and then pipe it back into the uh, image plane. And so now when we go to the beginning, 
our photo has a nice little border around it. You could also grab something like, like I have an image of some paper and uh, that image is definitely way too large. So what I'll do is add a letterbox. And then now uh, we have kind of a paper border around our, our image. So that's just one idea. Um, you could do whatever you want in this case. So hopefully you learned something and um, yeah, I'll see you later.